Over the next few minutes, we will show you how to create accounts receivable invoices for services and for inventory items. After the invoice batch has been created, we can create the invoices. For example, we have sold a service contract for $500 to one of our customers and need to create the invoice for this transaction. From Accounts Receivable, go to AR Transactions and select Invoice Batch List or Invoice Entry. We'll select Invoice Batch List. We choose the open batch where we want to add the invoice and click Open. Then we specify the detail type to use for the invoice. Summary includes just enough information to update your receivables records and general ledger revenue account. Use summary details when you do not maintain an inventory or when you update inventory information outside of accounts receivable. Item indicates you can use a price list when entering details and the invoice updates receivables records as well as the revenue, inventory, and cost of goods sold general ledger accounts. The last two accounts are optional. As we are invoicing the customer for a service, we'll select Summary. Now enter the invoice description and select the customer. You can add a ship to location if needed. We can see where the goods will be shipped or where the invoices will be sent by clicking the zoom icon. We can modify this information if needed. Then select invoice as the document type and enter the invoice date. The posting date automatically defaults to the document date. We can enter the invoice or document number or we can let the system generate the number. We can also enter the purchase order and order numbers and complete the special instructions. We'll leave them empty for our example. In the ship via field, we can specify the courier that will be shipping the goods. Then we enter the detail information. Select the distribution code or GL account. In this case, we'll use revenue account 4000. Now we add the amount. If we want to print the comments in this invoice, we can change the print comment to yes. In this case, we'll leave it at no. If this item is discountable, we'll verify the discountable column is set to yes. If we want to view all of the line details without having to scroll, or if we want to change the taxes for this line, we leave it highlighted and click account tax. You can see the amount, GL account, and other options in this window. At this point, the taxes are showing as zero because we haven't added the line to the invoice yet. If we don't want any of the taxes to be charged, we could change the detailed tax class to two for this specific tax. We don't need to make any changes in our example, so let's close this window. In the Taxes tab, we can see the tax information, including the customer tax class. In this case, the value is one for both taxes, indicating the customer is taxable. Remember that taxes are calculated based on the rates and rules set up within tax services. In the Terms tab, we select the Terms code for the invoice. Let's change the Terms code to N30. In the Sales Split tab, we can see which salespeople are being credited for the sale. In this case, two salespeople are getting credit for this sale. We can change the values as needed. In the Totals tab, we verify that the amounts are correct. After all of the invoice details have been entered, we add it and close out of the window. You can now see one entry was added to the batch and the batch is still open. We can add more transactions to this batch if desired. Please note the invoice will not impact the accounting system until the batch is posted. Let's see how to create an invoice with inventory items. For our example, we have sold two brackets and three cables to a customer 
and need to create the invoice for this transaction. We'll add this invoice to the same batch with our first invoice. We'll open this batch and click New by the entry number. This time the invoice detail type is Item. Enter the invoice description and select the customer, which is the same customer we used before in our example. Then select Invoice as the document type, enter the invoice date, and the system will generate the document number. We can now enter the item sold. First, we add the bracket and enter the quantity. The unit price and extended cost are populated. If we scroll to the right, we can see the other details and can change them if necessary. To add the next line, press Insert on your keyboard. Then choose the second item and quantity. Click Insert on your keyboard to add this second item or go to Account Tax and click Add there. Let's add the invoice and close out of the window.